All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We got some new faces here. People I know with their new faces. Welcome. Welcome to God Manifest. Uh, we're excited that this, today is going to be a really good day for everybody. I'm expecting big things this weekend. Started off with a, the great event at a friend's church. Um, I had a chance to speak at a friend's church, met some new friends there. And, uh, and God was really moving. I believe that there's a, there's a momentum going on right now. Yes. Um, it is time for offerings. You can make checks out the God Manifest. Thank you for your, for your giving. Thank you for supporting us. What God was showing me, God was showing me this dry desert. Dry, barren. And God says, do you hear the bitter pattern of the rain that's coming? I don't know if any of y'all are going through a dry season where there's a dry season spiritually, emotionally, financially. I believe God is, God is saying, can you hear the bitter pattern of the rain coming? It's coming. It's coming. The season's not changing, but the rains are coming. There's going to be a, a downpour and a drenching that this, this dry, barren season is no longer going to be dry and barren, God says. Yeah. So I expect that. It's going to be awesome. We got some quick announcements. Um, you know, our guest speaker, I'll, I'll announce him in a minute. Next week, a good friend of mine, she's a sister of mine. We can't, you can't tell by looking at us that we're actually related. Willie Stewart, the, the woman in blue. Yeah. Um, yes. Her and I are going to team up. We're going to do a Prophetic Sunday. Prophetic Sunday is a, it's a once a month event. God just pours out the prophetic. It gives y'all an opportunity just to receive. It's all about you. It's not about the, the, the speakers that are up here, the prophetic people who are giving the words. It's all about you. So come out here, bring friends. Um, anyone who walks through the doors will get a prophetic word. Um, <laughs> some of you are on multiple words. Some of you, sometimes the entire family receive words, and it's awesome. It's just a great time. Um, we, we, we'll teach on the prophetic. We'll activate the prophetic. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll just introduce to those who don't know the prophetic to the prophetic. So it's going to be a great event. So Willie Stewart and I are going to be doing that. The following, that's the 10th. The following week is the 17th. If I'm doing my math right, I'm Asian. I should be good at that. Um, so the 10th is, is going to be next week. The 17th is the following week. Our good friend Jim Sim is coming out. He's yes. a Scot, Scottish. Yes. So he comes fiery just because of his nature. Yeah. But he brings the fire of God. What I know about him is when I first encountered him, <coughs> I encountered things that I've never felt before, never seen before. And I'm seeing some cool stuff in my life. So... Y'all are up for an amazing treat yes. with Jim Sim. Um, and the following month, right, the first week of December, we have some friends visiting from Thailand. So we have um, Rob Perkle and Sarah Perkle coming from Thailand. They'll be staying with me for, I think, either 8 or 12 days. We haven't quite figured it out yet, but it's going to be two Sundays. He and I are going to team up on a prophetic Sunday. Um, you've never seen us team up before. You've never seen Rob and I work together before. Uh, I flow with him better than I flow with anybody I've ever been with. You know, uh, the closest thing is probably Crystal so far. So we'll see how Willie and I flow. But Willie and I are like, we're we can. So we're gonna we're, we come from the same blood. So we're gonna flow great next week. Um, but Rob, expect two Sundays in a row. Rob's gonna give deliver a message. He's he's, he's in Southeast Asia right now, um, seeing amazing revival. So he's just coming in for about three weeks. Um, he's gonna be. Just having a great time and um, and kind of traveling all over Texas those three weeks, but he's spending two weeks with me. So, what a treat! That's awesome. um, without further ado, I just wanted to tell, uh, brag a little bit about Scott and Shannon. I've known these two forever. The first time I encountered them, the way that God flows through them blew my mind, blew my understanding, blew oh, out my theology of what how God God moves. Um, their 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 family. They're like mothers and fathers in the spirits of Olivia and I. Um, like I was saying, I said, I've got, I've got two spiritual fathers. That's Larry Taylor and Scott Windrum. Um, and you have to be very selective and allow the Holy Spirit to guide you on, on who, who you call spiritual parents. And uh, these two just walk in love, walk in humility, and just walk in pure power of God. And it's very, very amazing just watching them flow. Um, they walk in so much revelation. And Shannon walks in healing. She walks in, uh, walks in pure love. When she when she speaks, you can feel love hit the room. Yeah. It's like a, it's like someone dropped an iron of love on top of the, the the room that she speaks in. The very moment she opens her voice, I can tell you, I feel the presence and the love of God just just crash down. So, without further ado, I want to invite Scott Windrum up. Please welcome him. 
Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is a wonderful day, isn't it? Yes. Just to praise the Lord and to thank Him for His goodness and mercy that follows us all the days of our lives. So, um, today I want to share with you something exciting about what God is doing. Even this pastor was speaking about, do you hear the pitter patter of the raindrops? Well, that's a that's like a a forerunner to the deluge of the water that's coming Amen. in the valley. Amen. And it's Amen. awesome. And you and I are part of it. You know, that's the whole thing. And so God, when he called us by his name, he called us and equipped us by his grace, by giving us his spirit. So I want to talk to you today about the spirit of God and your spirit. Amen. Did you know that you are a spirit and you have a soul and you live in a body? Yeah. Did you know that? It says in 1 Thessalonians 5, it says that may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless. So the Spirit of God created you in, in the likeness of God, and you are a triune being, spirit, soul, and body. The most important part of you is your spirit. In fact, the actual seat of your personhood is your spirit. The seed of your personality is your soul. And then the flesh and blood of you, person, that's your body. And so God has called us by his name to do some incredible things, and it's all by his spirit. I think what's interesting over the years, I've seen um, sort of a, an understanding come into my heart about how real this is, about the spirit of God. And so I, there are several things that are on my heart that I want to share with you and, and make it sort of systematic so we can kind of follow along, okay? First of all, your spirit, you and Jesus, it solves your identity crisis. So when you become born again, the part of you that's born again is your human spirit. Not your soul, not your body, but your spirit is born again. And in fact, I would say this, the part of you that is born again is your spirit. It's not your soul. And so I'm glad that my soul is saved, but I'm really glad that my spirit is born again. Now it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 6, if you want to turn there, and there's just one verse that I want us to look at that is going to launch us into what I want to share with you. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 17. It says... But the one who joins himself to the Lord is one spirit with him. Read it again. But the one who joins himself to the Lord is what? One spirit with him. Now, I remember the last time when you woke up in the morning and said, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that I'm one spirit with you. Now, what does that mean, one spirit? Is there a difference, a difference between your spirit and God's spirit? Yes. Yet, the mystery of it is you become one spirit with him. You become one with God. It's a union. It says in, in 1 John chapter 2 that you have an unction with the Holy One, an anointing, a joining with the Holy One, and it says you know all things. So your spirit knows all things because God is in your spirit and you are joined to him by covenant by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. You've been raised from the dead to walk in newness of life. So when the Spirit of God comes inside your spirit, it changes everything. This is different than it was in the Old Testament, where the Spirit of God would just come upon people. And, and so it's good for us not to get confused about the way it is now. I'm glad the Spirit of God came upon people. But it's different now because when the Spirit of God comes upon you initially and you receive the Lord Jesus Christ, no, there is a marriage, there is a union, there is a connection that doesn't leave you. The Spirit of God doesn't leave you. In the Old Testament, the Spirit of God might leave and come back after a while, and it was, called, it was called a visitation. And so what happens is when we're looking for visitations, we're sort of lift, look, looking for something that's an Old Testament concept because God doesn't want us just to have a visitation. The visitation came when Jesus came. He visited his people. But now God's not into visitation. He's into habitation. So we live in the Spirit of God, and the Spirit of God lives in us. See, I don't believe our spirit doesn't go in and out of the presence of God. You say, well, why do we talk about entering the presence of God? Basically, we're talking about our soul. And our soul is our mind, will, and emotions. And so we want our soul to feel what our spirit already knows. 
And so when we worship God, so we're entering God's presence. Well, uh, yeah, part of us is, but part of us was already there before we started singing. Your spirit is in the presence of God 24-7. Your spirit's always praying, always praising, always thanking God. And so that's where we start today. This solves the identity crisis we have. And what's very important is for us to understand that we are to serve God with our spirit. That's what the Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 1, verse 9. God whom I serve with my spirit. Now, I don't know about you, but I know very few people who consciously talk about their spirit serving God. But yet it's right there in the scripture. You remember that Jesus, that the, the, the command in the Old Testament, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength. Well, your heart is really your spirit. Your soul is different than your spirit. And so... Well, we might think, well, why do we have all these problems in life? The problems occur, listen, when our soul refuses to submit to our born-again spirit. I'll say it again. The problems occur when our soul is not submitting to our born-again spirit. So really, in the Greek, this, your spirit is masculine, the soul is feminine. So it's really, you've got this relationship with yourself. Me, myself, and I, right? And, and you get your soul to consciously submit to the spirit. Now, the soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Your soul is fickle. There's no telling what it's going to feel from one minute to the next. So I feel God, now I don't feel God. You know, I heard God, now I don't hear God. People just sound all this kind of thing because that's your soul speaking. But if you could ever connect with your spirit and stay there, that's the life. That's what God was talking about. Freedom is being led by the spirit. Now, I'm going to say some things about scriptures that we're very familiar with, but I want you to remember the first scripture we saw, 1 Corinthians 6, 17, that says, He who joins himself to the Lord is one spirit with him, which lets me know this is something that you consciously do. Now, if you're born again, that, that, that's not automatically real to you. If you can be born again, saved on your way to heaven, and be totally unconscious of the, of the wealth that's in your human spirit. Because we haven't been trained to think that way. But once we start to hear the voice of God, like we were talking about before, and you start to hear God, you start to understand it's your spirit that hears God first. Then your soul gets it and interprets it, and hopefully your body is blessed. May you prosper and, and be in health even as your soul prospers. So your soul prospers because it's listening to your born-again spirit. Now this is something that's kind of uh, unusual, maybe to some people. I want you to follow me, just the reasoning here for a minute. I take a, a track off of where I am right now to, to give you an example of how this works. It says in the, in the Word of God, Jesus said, when the Spirit comes, right, He will lead you into all truth. He will convict the world of what? Sin, righteousness, and judgment. So the Holy Spirit will come and do what? Convict the world, not the church. Convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Sin, because he's going to die, right? And, 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 and so when Jesus died on the cross, he made a way for you and I to be born again, right? And the conviction that he had upon our heart is that we didn't believe that Jesus was the Son of God. That's the sin, the sin that God really deals with the world about, is receiving Jesus Christ. That's the sin, okay? If your, go, if your life goes all messed up, it's initially because you have not received the Lord Jesus Christ. And so someone says, well, you know, I, all I know is the Holy Spirit's constantly telling me how to do this, how to drive, how to be a better person, be a better husband. And, all. and I think that's, that's interesting. But see, Jesus, here's what Jesus specifically said. When the Holy Spirit comes, he will lead you into all truth. He will take those things that belong to me and show them to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that what he said? Yeah. All right. He didn't say he's going to come and tell you all your sins. So I ask people this, well, the things of Christ, are your sins, inadequacies, weaknesses, are those the things of Christ? No. no. So the Holy Spirit is showing you something other than your sins. He's showing you the things of Christ. And so someone might think, well, well how come I feel like I'm being convicted by the Spirit of God? And I'm going to submit this to you. I believe it's because your born-again human spirit is one with God. And your human spirit is saying, don't go into that place. Take a right turn. You don't want to deal with that person. You, you're being led by the Spirit. See, what we're thinking is we're being led by the Holy Spirit, yes, because our spirit is one with Christ. But then our spirit is part of the action. You see what I'm saying? 
We're not just sitting there like a bump on a log and the Spirit of God speaks to us and we try to react. No, we're one with Him. And so we start to move in the power of the Spirit of God. We start to listen because we say, I'm one with God. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. They will not listen to the voice of a stranger. So if you are listening to a voice of a stranger, what part of you is listening to the stranger? Your soul. Because your spirit wouldn't dare do that. Your spirit's always alive in Christ. And so to be conscious of that is very, very important. Now over in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, Paul explains, and this is really what I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to do this, this morning, is to give you an explanation of what's happening in you, for you, and through you. Because... A lot of what we're looking for in the, the world, we talk about how many of you believe it's good to pray for revival? Okay? But here's the deal. God wants to turn the revival into you so that you can turn the world into revival. See, we say, well, God's just going to pour out his spirit. Well, it'll be good to see when it happens, see when our prayers are answered. God says, tag, you're it. I've called you to go forth and do the works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll be there with you. We're co-workers together with God. So we're, we're part of the action. In fact, to do the will of God, to really do the will of God, you must see that you become the will of God. Because it goes back to the identity of who you are by the Spirit of God and knowing that you are who you are by His grace. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul says this, very famous scripture. He says... <clears throat> But just as it is written, this is uh, verse 17, right? As it is written, things which eye has not seen, ear has not heard, and which has not entered into the heart of man, all that God has prepared for them that love him. Now people speak this scripture all the time. Am I correct where I am? Nine, I'm sorry. Nine, and then, now this is verse 10. Before I read verse 10, let me just say, I heard many, many people preach. Praise God, I hardly wait till I die and go to heaven. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. Those things that God has prepared for them that love him. So basically what we think is what's going to give all this glory to us is when we die. you got to wait for them. And then you really see the glory. And I don't know what this is now. What, pretend glory or what? <laughs> what, what do you experience now? This is the ultimate. I'm telling you, tag, you're it. This is it. And he said, well, it's, it's going to be different when I die and go to heaven. It'll be different, but it all seemed like home already. Before you get there, he said, man, I've been living here for years. Just the body had, was hanging on me is gone. But that's the only difference, you see. And so he said, I'm so glad God's going to show me all this stuff in the future. Right here, the Apostle Paul says, all these things that eye has not seen, ear has not heard, and has not entered the heart of man. It says, for God, to us, God revealed them, past tense, through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. So the spirit of God is searching the deep things of God to bring them to you and me now. In fact, he has. You say, well, if he's revealed them to them, how come, how come, I don't know, I don't get it. How come I'm not experiencing? Well, again, your spirit knows all things. Your spirit knows the things of God. And it's a matter of your soul Submitting to your spirit so you can get it. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, this, this gets really good here. For to us God revealed them through his spirit. Okay, now look at verse 11. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except what? The spirit of the man which is in him. Who knows the true thoughts of a human being except the spirit of that human being? Now, right here in the scripture, I would say this is foreign to most people I know, even Bible scholars. What does that mean? <coughs> no one knows the thoughts of a man. You don't know your thoughts <coughs> except by your spirit. Your spirit knows more about you than your soul. Your spirit knows more about you than your body. So that's a powerful thing. And when we think about it, this get, gets really deep, doesn't it? For who knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of the man, which is not the soul. And see, I'm telling you, folks, we reside so much in the soul, we let our soul interpret our lives. Well, I'm depressed. How are you know depressed? Because I feel this way. We're living in a soul realm, you see. And if we could ever get, okay, God, my spirit knows my thoughts more than any other part of my trying being. 
Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God. Is that reminiscent of 1 Corinthians 6, 17? We've not received the spirit of the world, but what the spirit of God, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God, which things we speak. Now, I'll stop for a minute. He says, how do we know the things freely given to us by God? By the Holy Spirit. And we were talking before the service today about listening to the Holy Spirit and then also knowing the Bible. Can I tell you, you can know the Bible backwards and forwards and never hear the voice of God. You can, you can know Scripture, and this is the problem. Our minds read the Scripture, but they must be interpreted by the Spirit or we miss the point. And there are things you can't see in the Word unless the Holy Spirit's speaking to you. When I read things, I'm thinking, Lord, I've never seen that before. And God says, well, you weren't looking for it. And you can't find something you're not looking for. You know what I'm saying? You just can't do it. And I have a, a teaching on that about how you have to consciously look. You know, it says uh, that Daniel, he looked in the Spirit. He, he looked to see what he could see. And that God would challenge the prophets, look and see. And he wasn't talking about his physical eyes. They were talking about their spiritual eyes. Look and see with your spiritual eyes. What do you see? I see an almond tree. Okay, there we go. God says, okay, what is that? What's that about? And God starts giving the interpretation to the prophets. And But here's what's interesting. To show you how this is not just a matter of being cognizant with your, your head and with your mind understanding the Bible. Because if you just use your head to understand this, it's going to get really crazy and confusing because some things don't make a lot of sense. So listen to what he says right here. So we, we freely, we receive from God, the freely given to things given to us by God, verse 13, which things we also speak not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit. Listen to this, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. Now you can't combine spiritual thoughts with spiritual words unless you understand it by the Holy Spirit. And that's why we need to say, I'm one with God, I'm one spirit with God, and I'm going to under understand the things of God by the Spirit. And right here it says very, very plainly that <clears throat> we combine spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. In the Greek, it's really, it's really different. It says we're combining spirituals with spirituals. Because <laughs> those words are in italics. Thoughts and words are in italics. So we combine spirituals with spirituals. The things of the Holy Spirit with your spirit. See, once your human spirit gets it, man, the whole world changes because you see it and you can't unsee it. If you see it by the Spirit and you see it in your human spirit, you can't unsee it. It becomes a permanent mark in, in your heart to where then you're really changed. Now, interesting, we're in 1 Corinthians and verse uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 14. You remember that when Paul says, when I pray in the Spirit, when you pray in tongues, he says, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. So here's my question. How do you become aware of your human spirit? I mean, I think most people, even though theologically they say, I, I am a spirit, I have a soul, I live in a body. The way it works is this. They think, I am a soul, I have a body, and somewhere inside of me is floating around my spirit, which I seldom relate to. I mean, that, that people don't have the foggiest idea of what their spirit is. So my question is, what could you possibly do to connect with the reality of your spirit being one with God? You ready for this? Pray in the Holy Ghost. Building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. So when you pray in the Spirit, you're connecting directly with the reality of the Holy Spirit in your life. That's why a lot of people don't do it. That's why people don't pray in tongues a lot. I have friends that are going through all sorts of trauma. When I went through the greatest trauma of my life, <coughs> I started speaking in, in tongues so much I scared my kids. Because, man, I was desperate because I didn't know what to pray. So if you don't know what to pray, people say, I've been praying, praying, praying. I said, yeah, but have you prayed in the Holy Ghost? No. Well, I know one thing. If you start praying in the Holy Spirit, you're going to start praying the will of God. It says right there, you speak mysteries to God and you pray the very will of God. Romans chapter 8. We pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. And by the way, so it's, it's, it's the Holy Spirit praying through you. Well, okay, one way of looking at it. But here's the thing. When the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, 
It says the Spirit of God filled the room where they were sitting, right? And, the, and they all began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You see, well, is, is the Spirit praying through me? Well, the Spirit's with you, and your Spirit is praying as the Spirit gives you utterance. So He doesn't just come and open your mouth and say, you're, you're not a part of this. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You don't start speaking tongues because the Spirit of God just speaks in tongues through you. No, you're active, activating the reality and the consciousness of your Spirit to the, what's going on. That's why when you pray in the Holy Ghost, <coughs> all of a sudden you start feeling better because you're connecting with the things of God. Now, let me go back and just reiterate this. Nobody gets any funny ideas. Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing, right? So he said, well, we've got to be sure we're not led by our spirit, but led by the Holy Spirit. No, you and, you and the Holy Spirit, your spirit and the Holy Spirit are one spirit. You're one with God. So see, these fears are unfounded. And a lot of people say, what, what are we going to do? If, you know, thank God we have the Bible, and, but also we have the Holy Spirit. No, thank God we have the Holy Spirit and we also have the Bible. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? I tell you what, it's more important for you to be filled and know the Holy Spirit than to know the Bible. Even though we have the Bible, I love the Bible. We live in a country where you get 50 translations the minute you turn on your computer. But, but think about this. People say, well, if we didn't have the Word, we wouldn't make it. Well, what do you do with the millions of people in the world that don't have a Bible, have never seen a Bible, and will never see a Bible? How about them? How do they make it? So the idea, you, I mean, I'm glad that most of us read our Bible every day. That's great. But what if you've never read the Bible? Is there any hope for you? When you hear people preach, you think, well, there's no hope, man. You don't know the Bible. <laughs> well, I'm here to tell you, God knew. It was only over the last few centuries that people had Bibles. So for thousands, for, for hundreds of years, most Christians who lived on the face of the earth never had a Bible. Now, I'm not at all degrading or making light or saying the word, the scriptures are minimized in any way. I'm just saying, thank God we have them. But apparently, people were getting by without Bibles. And my question is, how'd they do it? If we're telling people, you can't survive unless you have a Bible. Well, that's a lie. Jesus died on the cross and rose again from the dead, not to give people a religion, but to give them righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So their spirit is born again. There are people in villages all over the world. They're seeing miracles happen. More than in the United States. Well, how did they do it? They didn't read about it. They heard about it. Because the good news travels. And I'm telling you, the most powerful thing is the preaching of the Word of God. And now we get this thing, well, I, you know, how can we make it without all these people helping us? Well, I thank God for spiritual fathers and people, spiritual moms and all these people that have helped me over the years. But I'm here to tell you, if you're by yourself someday and there's nobody around, I believe you can make it. You know why? Because you're born again by the Holy Spirit. Now, I want you to see, this is interesting because we were talking about this again before the service. 1 John chapter 2, this is the scripture um, that is so powerful. It says, verse 20, but you have an anointing from the Holy One or an unction, a union with the Holy One, and you know all things. All right? He says, I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you do know the truth, and because no lie is of the truth. Who is the liar but the one who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, the one who uh, denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father. It's powerful, isn't it? Real simple. The one who con confesses the Son has the Father also. As for you, let it abide in you, which you heard from the beginning. Let it what? Abide, a live in you. God's in the habitation, not visitation, right? Now look at this, verse uh, 25. This is the promise which he himself made to us, eternal life. The things I have written to you concerning those who are trying to deceive you, as you, the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, listen, and you have no need for anyone to teach you. But as the anointing teaches you about all things and is true and not a lie, and just as it has been taught to you, you abide in him. Now, this is an unusual scripture because really it's speaking to your spirit. So someone might think, well, 
Why do we need teachers in the body of Christ if no one can teach me? It's not saying that we don't need teachers to teach. What it's saying is, you're not going to really learn anything <laughs> unless you're enlightened by the Holy Spirit. That's what it's saying. You don't have any need for someone to make it clear to you because the Lord himself had prophesied in the Old Testament. The Lord himself, he will be your teacher. You will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk you in it. Don't turn the left or to the right. So God says, I'll be your teacher. <coughs> and even as Jonathan has mentioned, once you hear the voice of God, you've entered into the school of the Holy Spirit. And I appreciate when we're talking about Karis and different, when there are great Bible schools all over the United States, we're really blessed. But I'm telling you what, as much as I appreciate teachers, and I, I've learned a lot from a lot of wonderful, gifted people, I'm going to tell you, the school of the Holy Spirit is different. Now, if you have both, that's good. But I'm here to tell you, you and I are called by God to worship in spirit and in truth, to be worshipers. And where do we worship God? What? In spirit and in truth. For such, God seeks to worship him. I heard something interesting the other day, I think it's true, it says God's not looking for worship. He's looking for worshipers. Why? Because why does he, why, he God, God doesn't need worship. He wants us to worship him because he knows how it will change us. Because what you worship, you become like what you worship. That's interesting, right? And we're not going to get to the scripture because I want to do some other things to, to, to uh, go through the scriptures, but I want to mention to you in Galatians chapter 3 and chapter 5, it talks about, did you start off in the, in the spirit and now you're going to be perfected by, by the flesh? Did you hear, did you, did you have these miracles happen by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? He starts explaining to him, listen, if, <laughs> if you have been become alive by the spirit in the same way, walk in the spirit. Now, you know, these scriptures are very interesting. I want to submit this to you because I think this becomes more practical what I'm sharing with you and how you can fight your enemies and how you can deal with yourself. It says, <clears throat> walk, in, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You ever read that scripture before? That's what it says. Now, let me tell you what, how it comes across when I hear people teach it. Don't fulfill the lust of the spirit and then you'll be able to, the flesh and then you'll be able to walk in the spirit. You hear what I'm saying? So if you, say, if you clean up your act, then you'll be able to get close to God. But God says, no. Walk in the Spirit, and then you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Not try your best not to fulfill the lust of the flesh, and then someday you'll walk in the Spirit. See, God gives us the Spirit as a gift. We don't earn it. Amen. And so someone's, well, how come so many people do? Because they're mixing Old Testament principles into New Testament realities. And it gets very confusing. And that's why we've got to see. God hasn't covered my sins. He took them away. In the Old Testament, they never had them taken away. And again, I think for us, I want to teach some other time more about the two covenants. Because we get this thing very confused. I reinterpret the Old Testament through the New Testament. Does that make sense? And so there are songs, they're good songs, but they're not the best songs. Like what? As the deer panteth for the water so much. I mean... I'm thirsty all the time. Wait a minute. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus said, the water I give you, you drink of this water, you will never thirst again. So we have all these songs about how thirsty we are. Well, we may be thirsty. What part of us is thirsty? Our soul. But our spirit's not thirsty. So what it means, it's like, if you're going to go across a desert, you're going to go across and you have fuel to make it all the way across, and you have a big tanker full of water. Guess what? It's not that you won't feel thirsty, but you're going to stop the truck or get out, and you're going to get the water. It's, you carry your supply with you. Amen. That's the New Testament. Not looking as a deer looking for a brook somewhere. That was okay. That's what David said. But David was not born again. He didn't live in the New Covenant. Right. So what we have is the Spirit of God is much, much better. I mean, here's John the Baptist who left in his mother's womb, filled with the Spirit of God in his mother's womb. And yet Jesus said, he who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than John. What do you mean? I mean, someone says, man, I'm not better than John the Baptist. It's not, it doesn't say you're, he, he, you're better than him. It says you're greater than him. Why? Because the least in the kingdom of God has been born again, and John was never born again. 
So that becomes our, our heart. That becomes our power, if you might say, is that we are empowered by the Spirit of God yeah, yeah, yeah. in such a way because we're one Spirit with Him. So, walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of flesh. Now, let me submit this to you because the word Spirit as we've already seen this morning, has several applications. Spirit can be your spirit. It can be the Holy Spirit. Of course, then there are evil spirits, but just stick to what we're talking about today. Your spirit and the Holy Spirit. I submit to you, is your spirit born again? Okay. So if you walk, listen, in your born-again spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And Paul talked about this war going on. The spirit wars against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit so that I can't do the things I want to do. So when I think about it, and you say, I want you to hear this. So I don't see that my flesh every day is warring with the Holy Spirit. No, my flesh is warring against my own human spirit. That's the war. And all I have to do is submit my soul to my human spirit. And guess what? Things start to click. Things happen. And the power of the Spirit of God starts to move in my life. And I'm cognizant. I'm aware of what's true in my soul because I've connected with my born-again spirit. I, I, let me just ask a question. How many have you ever heard a whole sermon on your human spirit? Not, not one, right? It shows you how unaccustomed we are to the whole subject. So to think that I'm going to share this this morning and everybody's, hey, I got it now. No, we're probably going to need to hear this over and over and really get it sealed in our hearts. But the war, this, and that, that, I'm telling you, this helps me to realize my born-again spirit is just hunky-dory, fine, cool, in the presence of God. And so we say, in the name of Jesus, I'm taking authority over this flesh. Paul said, I subject myself to myself. <laughs> he said, I'm not going to be controlled by other things. And that's where people say, my soul is overwhelmed. I don't know what to do. You've got to remember, your soul is freaking out. You're going through all these crazy emotions. And what God wants you to know, hey, look, connect with your human spirit. There's part of you that's acting crazy, but you're not all crazy. You've got, you got the stable part of you that's your human spirit that's born again and one with Jesus Christ. <laughs> And he who joins himself to the Lord is one spirit with him. I mean, it gets better. It's like Christmas all year long. And when I talk to people, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you a, a real secret. I, when I was going through a lot of trouble years ago, I was living in San Antonio. I had a friend, a pastor friend, that came all the way down from Temple, Texas. And uh, we met, I think, at a Rudy's. And he, t he said, I came to tell you something. Because I'm ready for it. What, what do you want to say? He said, the Lord says you need to speak in tongues a whole lot. That was the word. No more than that. And I'm here to tell you, folks, I, it, it's, it's amazing to me. It's like the devils or, or whatever obstacles are in the way. It's like evil doesn't care if you just pray in your known language. They're freaking out if you start praying in the Holy Spirit. And I've talked, to, I've talked to people, they can pray for an hour, but they don't pray in the Spirit. And they don't pray in tongues. And, hey, there it is. There's the secret. And I'm telling you, I've, I've, I've talked to people and counseled with people. I said, well, why don't you just get alone for about 15 minutes and pray in the Holy Spirit? It's like everything in them doesn't want to do it. Why? Because your soul wants to be in control. And let me just say, to this day, um, I've experienced this. So, you know, uh, I got saved in 1971, filled with the Holy Spirit, right? And to this day, see, your soul likes to be in control. And Paul explained, when you pray in the Spirit, your mind, your soul is unfruitful. It just sounds like gibberish. You don't understand it. So your soul can get kind of haughty and proud and offended, really. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to go in a back room and speak in tongues. I had almost had to do, look, I had to tell myself, you be quiet, you sit down and shut up. I'm going to the back room. I'm going to pray in the Holy Ghost. And when I come out, we're both going to feel better. You know what I'm saying? And that becomes real. So to this day, there's something in me that's kind of, wow, man, I sure wish I knew what was going on. But my, my spirit prays in the Holy Spirit. 
and with the Holy Spirit. We pray with the Spirit, and we pray with the understanding. But you leave out praying with the Spirit out of the equation, there's no wonder people are confused about who they are and, again, has created an identity crisis. So it's good for us to get plugged in, isn't it, huh? By the Holy Spirit. And just go through the scripture. I encourage it and find out and see where it talks about your spirit. Your spirit, soul, and body. Paul said, I serve God with my spirit. I would say if we were really conscious of this. Well, I was thinking about it, of course, today. I thought, man, I'm one with Jesus, you know. But when you look to your soul to discern who you are, and you go and you look at the frustration you're having in your emotions to define your life, that's a big, big mistake. Because that's where a lot of people miss it right there. And what happens is, I'll, I'll speak to your spirit right now. You're a human spirit. How many are you glad you gave your life to Jesus? And all the stuff you've been through from the time you gave your heart to Jesus till now, can you see all that God's done for you? And immediately, something you yes. Has God ever failed you? Nope. Has he always been there? Yes. Is he faithful? Yes. Well, what happens is this. Your soul evaluates your life by a little slice of time. Your spirit can see the whole view of things. You know what I'm saying? So if you're going through Crazyville right now in your life, so it's, how's your Christian life? I don't know, man. It's really... And what happens, you get tunnel vision and you're looking, and you start thinking that the things that are happening to you right now or this month or even this year, right, defines and starts to show you what your life is like. And usually it's, it's miserable. So, well, my goodness, my soul is just so focused on the now. And what you do is you start praying in the Holy Spirit and all of a sudden... You start lifting up, getting lifted up by the Spirit of God. And that's why it says, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the hope. How do you build yourself up? You can talk to your soul all day long and never get out of the mother groves. And you, you think, well, life just stinks. But you see, you get rid of the stink by praying in the Holy Ghost. I may share this with you, but I'm going to end this sermon part with this. Uh, because see, what happens is we, we start discerning things by what is nearest to us and what is more real to us than other things. Well, it's, I heard the story about these two little boys and they thought they were going to play a trick on their grandpa. And uh, he's sleeping on the couch. He's watching wrestling or something. He's sleeping on the couch and uh, he's got a mustache. And little boys think it'd be fun. They, they smell that horrible Limburger cheese that was being eaten earlier, and they go in the, in the refrigerator and get this some this cheese, and they mush it up, and they go behind the couch and they reach over and they start putting some of that cheese on his mustache. And after a little while, you know, Grandpa, he starts to wake up, and they're behind the couch laughing, you know. He says, my goodness, man, something smells bad. He gets up and goes in the kitchen. Well, What's the order in this kitchen? It's just as bad here. Finally, he goes to the back door, opens up the screen door, <coughs> takes a big whiff of air, and says, my God, the whole world sinks. <laughs> <laughs> and what was stinking was right under his nose. And that's what happens when we start to live by the soul power rather than spirit power. I was thinking, you know, what kind of person are you? Well, you can say I'm, I'm vigilant. In fact, one thing, I, it's been funny, I'm just trying to train myself your words have a lot to do with it. And so, uh, left my, I don't know about you, but I can get impatient real quick. I guess I'm the only one. Right? Okay, okay, well, anyway, pray for me in my, in my trial here. But, but I, I, I've noticed that people say, well, sorry, uh, uh, sir, sorry, you know, it's having to, it taking so long to get you your food. I said, that's okay, I'm patient. And just when I say that, just rises up in me. Well, it's okay, you know, doesn't matter, but it does matter and you're ticked, right? But the minute you tell them, I want you to know, I'm glad you're serving me today and it's cool. It's wonderful. You know why? Because I'm patient. So well, how can you say you're patient? Because the fruit of the what? Spirit. And see, we think the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Well, yes, he's the originator, but your spirit 
is full of love, joy, peace, patience. Your spirit Amen. is full of the fruit of the spirit. And I believe that's what it's talking about. So if you walk according to the flesh, it's death. You walk according to the spirit, it's what? Life, Life. and peace. So in Romans chapter 8, where it talks about this, it says the mind set on the flesh is death. The mind set on the spirit is life and peace, right? So listen, you don't have two brains and you don't have two minds. You got one. So some, what makes somebody spiritually minded is when they have their mind set on the spirit. What makes somebody fleshly or carnal minded is when they have their one mind on the flesh. That's why it says don't be double minded. A double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Do not think, let him think he will receive anything from the Lord. So see that confusion comes in when we don't know what to obey or who to obey. But I'm telling you what, you say, man, my spirit is alive and kicking. So if we receive Jesus by faith into our spirit, now, so walk in him. Walk in who you've been made to be and see what happens. You know what happens? The whole world changes. You see things from God's perspective a lot easier. Does this help? See, I think that's really a secret. You say, well, man, I just want to feel God. I want to feel God too. But you've got to remember this. As much as you want to feel God, he's not going to come out of heaven to do it. He's going to come through you. Because you already have him in you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Is that good? Yes, good. So say, Lord, we want to see you do what you want to do. He says, well, I want to see you do what you're supposed to do. <laughs> Obey me. Obey my voice. Say, Lord, that's what I'm going to do. That's, that's going to be my mantra. That's going to be my echo. <sighs> I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. You know what part of you says that? Your spirit says that. Right? <laughs> that's interesting out of Proverbs the blessing of the Lord makes rich. Amen. And he adds what? No sorrow to it. You know, see, your spirit believes that. But your soul struggles with that. The blessing of the Lord makes rich and he adds no sorrow. Whoa. I got some sorrows I can tell you about. See? How the soul kicks in. Immediately wants to contradict the spirit. You say, I'm not going to let that happen. You think that would be good for us to do that the rest of this day? We might just shock ourselves and how happy we can be. Sometimes you turn and say, man, I'm happier than I thought I was. Because you're not in this conflict, constantly in this conflict. So what is the Holy Spirit saying to us today? That's what we're going to listen to. Because see, it's better than we think it is. Amen. And the reason I shared this with you is to get you set for, well, not just this week, next week. Really what I'm sharing with you is, has a lot to do with what happens next week. Because you have people come and they receive from the Lord knowing what we're talking about. That your spirit's already born again and he's with you all the time. Now you get the prophetic word and this is why people have hard times with the prophetic word. Because they're trying to hear that word by their soul. And they need to receive it first by their spirit. You say, what's the difference? I've had people tell me, think, man, that sounds crazy, but my spirit is jumping up and down inside. Say, yes, yes, yes. And someone says, do you believe it? Say, yeah, I believe it. But my soul's having a hard time with this. But I believe it. And what happens is you say, so you come into alignment with the purpose of God, and I command you to submit in Jesus' name. Amen. You got more authority in your own life than you think you do. Amen. So we're not a bunch of helpless creatures here. We've been made more than conquerors to him that loves us. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Amen. Praise God. Well, Libby, why don't you come here? I'm going to... Have Shannon hold the mic here for me. And I'm going to sing some songs. We're just going to have a good time. Um, what's that? Okay, all right. That'd be good. Are we alive there? Yeah. Olivia, this is what the Lord says. He says, have I not spoken to you and given you promises that are rich and true? And the Lord says, I'm lifting you above the heads of your enemies. So that now you can be free and walk in the power of the Spirit of God. The Lord says, nothing is impossible with you. 
because you believe and because your heart is set on pilgrimage, on the journey, you're going to end up at your destination with a lot of rewards. As God says, I'm a rewarder of those that diligently seek me. He says, I see you seeking me. I see you wanting to become closer and closer to me in my presence. And so now it's happening. I have you right here in this very place so you can see my face. I'm gonna make a way in the wilderness. I'm giving you the very best. It's gonna be better than you ever dreamed. It's gonna be better than it seems because I made you in my image and I made you in my likeness to go forth now in the power of my holy name. And you'll never be the same. I have you right where you are today. Don't you see it now? I'm gonna work it out for you somehow. It's gonna be better than you ever thought. Better than you ever, ever dreamed. It's even better than it seems. It's even Sometimes we'll hear something like, well, I wish he'd sung that song to me. Or maybe you're watching us online today and you're saying the same thing like, wow, if I was there, boy, I wish I would have gotten that song. Well, guess what? You did. All you need to do is reach out and receive it by faith. And it's yours. Because that's the spirit of the Lord speaking to your born again spirit. And you can receive it. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's by the Spirit of God. Not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. What's your name? Zoe. Come over here. Zoe? Oh, that's a beautiful name. That means you have life in you, right? Oh, I saw your disappointment when things didn't work out. But I was there with you, knowing what it's all about. So don't you be afraid what's going to happen to you, child. Even though at times it seems so crazy and wild. Because I, I'm healing you from all those things that want to haunt you in the night. Because I've healed you And I've come to make it right All those that hurt you and ran away Never apologize I was there holding you Don't you realize that I'm doing more for you Than you ever can see down deep in your heart, you belong to me. I made a way where there seems to be no way. Remember everything that I have to say. It's a brand new day. Oh, it's a brand new day. I have all your tears right here in a bottle on my shelf don't you know can't you see all those tears you shed when you thought hey am i dead i was there loving you so much don't you remember don't you remember my holy touch Amen. God bless you. What in God's holy hearts there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, that you're the God of all flesh. 
And nothing's too hard for you. Hallelujah. <laughs> What's your name again? Crystal. Yeah, beautiful names here. Man, people were really thinking when they named everybody <laughs> here, weren't they? <clears throat> I see you going across a bridge. And you, you were kind of scared to do it, but you went ahead and went across the bridge. Because what was behind you was scarier than the bridge. And it was kind of, wasn't real stable, but you by faith just said, I'm going to make it across. I see you being just relieved because now you finally gate, got to the other side. Okay? You're not hanging. But your enemies that were chasing you, the Lord wanted you to go across that bridge so it could be cut and the bridge could be destroyed. And the Lord wants you to know that the enemies that you once knew will not be able to follow you. And they will not be able to blackmail you. And they will not be able to hurt you or harm you anymore. Because the Lord says, I've cut them off. I've destroyed your enemies. And you are not going to be afraid of what they can do. They're powerless, the Lord says, because you've crossed the bridge. The bridge is a place of spiritual rest. We're taking you to a place of spiritual rest where you are free from your enemies on all sides. And the enemies of your soul are under the feet of Jesus. And because you're in Jesus, your enemies are under your feet too. Can you stomp on them right now? There they are. The Lord says, that's where they are, and you keep them under your feet by faith. And don't be thinking, well, what's going to happen? What if they come back? Well, they're not coming back. Okay? You will look for your enemies and look for the wicked. And the Bible says you will look for them in their place and they won't be there. Amen. So the very things that are threatening you are not of God. <clears throat> and God's already taken care of this. He's done kingdom business for you. Can you believe that? Amen. Hey, Crystal, I just I had a word of the Lord for you too. Is that <coughs> the bridge is cut off behind you. The Lord will build a ring of fire around you, and a mighty warrior angel will come out of God's army with a flaming sword to protect you and watch over you. Because he has plans for you, not for evil, but for good with a hope and a future and a destiny. And he will fulfill it, and he will be protecting you the entire way. Thank you. According to the power that works in us, right? Praise God. Amen. Are they leaving? Yes. Uh, no, one of them is leaving. That lady, God had something for her. You know, the Lord really had something for her. Yeah. She's right here. Tell her to come here real quick. He wants to speak to you real Yeah, man. Come over here, if you will, huh? Yeah, yeah, you just pray. I know you need to leave pretty soon, right? But why don't you come here because I'm going to tell you something. The, the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and are safe. And I see that there are claws that have tried to grab you and, and pull you back. And the Lord says, I declawed them. Okay? And so you're, it says, God says, I've broken the teeth of your enemies. So all, all, all you can do is gum you, okay? <laughs> the Lord says, I've broken the legs of those that were chasing you. The Lord says, I have personally come to rescue you, to take you out of harm's way. And the Lord says, don't you remember how I've protected you this far? And now get ready because I'm going to pour out my spirit upon you and your family. I'm going to do exceeding abundantly beyond all you ask or think according to the power that works in you. And God says, my power is working in you. And God says, you're precious to me. And he says, no evil is going to befall you. No plague is coming near your home because you've made the Lord even the most high your habitation. And God says, I've made you my habitation. 
Is that cool? And some of you ladies come and stand behind her here. Because I just see, man, there's, there's something good. Are you glad you came today? It's fun, right? And so we're just going to, we're going to, we're going to sing, I'm going to sing a song as the ladies put their hands upon you, okay? Just relax and kick back and rest in my arms. And I won't let you come to any harm. Just see things from my perspective. You're not an accident, you've been elected Because I love you more Than you've ever known I love you More than you ever thought before This is a day of revelation Rise up right now without hesitation And come and see what I'm doing for you My open arms are right here I'm saying it today and I'm making it so clear You're not under the curse But I've blessed you so much You're not under the curse But I've come to touch Your heart with my spirit true Oh, I'm not through with you and I'll keep you in my love I'll keep you in my love Protected right here from above You're protected right here from above You're welcome, God bless you Why don't you come here, sir? Huh? Yeah. I have a the strangest vision. I don't get visions like this very often. But um, did you ever see the, fa uh, the Fabulous Four? The Fab Four? I'm talking about the Fabulous Four. Uh, uh, it was with uh, uh, the guy that could stretch. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic, Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as you were there, I just saw a vision of you and your arms and it stretched way out and then your legs and it's like... You know what I'm saying? Like you were reaching and every every place it's like you willed it and it happened. And and I was like, what is that? And this was well, in the natural, you know, you can only stretch your arms so many inches from your body. But in the spiritual realm, you reach far past those things. And you're able to touch people, touch things, touch situations that are far from you. And I believe that this is a word for you about your faith. Lord it says your faith extends far past the natural and into the spiritual realm. And what you reach with, the, re the, the, see, the, the reaching was not just physical, it was a spiritual thing and you're doing it by your words. And the Lord says, you're gonna speak to things that are so remote from you that they're gonna feel your touch and they're gonna feel my spirit in places that are, that are, that are not even connected to you. But you're able to reach and touch them by, by faith in such a way that it revolutionizes their life. And I just right now, just let, let me just pray for you. Father, I thank you for Dennis. I thank you, Lord, for the revelation that you've given him. And I thank you, Lord, for his ability to see past the present into the future, his ability to stretch his hands and the spirit far past the natural and into the spiritual realm. And I thank you, Lord, that he's walking by faith and not by sight. I thank you, Lord, this is a, an area of uh, that you're emphasizing right now in his heart and in his mind. God says, you speak those things that I've given you. Your, your words are going to frame your world for tomorrow. Your words are going to touch people far distances from where you are. And the Lord says, this is a new day to rise up in the power of the Spirit and do not delay. The Lord says, what you say, I will honor. And you'll be like Samuel. None of your words will fall to the ground. The Lord says, the things that I speak to you and through you, they will be accomplished. And I'm working these things according to my purpose and that I will fulfill my word. I am, My word is running swiftly through the earth. And it's running swiftly through the earth because it's come through your mouth. And I'm establishing things for you. 
and you're sowing seeds even though you're not reaping what you want to reap. The Lord says, yeah, you're sowing seeds and they're going to come back and flourish in the fields that you have not even seen yet. The Lord says, I'm taking away the distress. I'm taking away the concern and I'm making a way for you in the wilderness, streams in the desert, a roadway in the wilderness that all flesh will see the salvation of God. You are my son by inheritance and I have not forgotten you. I have not at all changed my mind about what I've purposed you for. I have made you as a, a two-edged threshing sledge that will pulverize the mountains and turn them to dust. See it in your spirit. See it in your heart. And then execute it with your soul 100% behind everything that I've spoken to you. Speak those things that be not as though they are and you will see them manifested before you and so will others. Others will come and see and behold my goodness through you and to you and for you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. There's, <clears throat> there's no dead wood here. I had a vision of the fires in California that are just blazing. And the reason they are is because there's underbrush, there's dead wood that they allow to collect either for because they're lazy or because they think they're green, green. But what they're protecting isn't green. It's dead. And now they're having these flash fires just consume and threaten institutions and everything else right outside of L.A. You know about that. But it's because people were not diligent to get rid of the dead wood. The Lord says, you have. And since you've cleared away the dead wood, you're not in danger of your whole forest burning down. You're protected, the Lord says. But you're protected not just by accident or by divine visitation, but you're protected because you did those things that were necessary to make a way. See, a lot of these people, they don't want to cut through the forest and take trees down, but if they only take certain trees down in a certain swath of land, it would protect the, the trees on one side being taken over by fires flipping over. But it really came to me, no dead wood in this man. And the Lord sees that you have a good heart. And I'm reminded of Nathaniel that when he came to Jesus, Jesus looked at him and said, Behold a man in whom there is no guile. And Nathaniel said, how do you know me? So when Jesus told him he was a good man and he had integrity and he had no guile, Nathaniel knew that Jesus knew who he was. And God knows who you are and saw you coming before you ever arrived. The Lord says, I've called you my son in whom there is no deceit and there is no guile. But the Lord says, the only thing you need to access more of is wisdom. And Jesus, my son, has become made unto you wisdom. So you have wisdom. But you have no need to be concerned about deception. Because the evil one will not deceive you. That's my covenant promise to you. So without, without any concern about excess or misuse let your heart be led by my spirit and do those things boldly that I put within you and don't hold back anything and I will be there to make sure that you're not blindsided <laughs> that you're not at all abused by the enemy because I have plans for you that are far beyond your imagination that are going to take place because you are a guileless man. No dead wood in you, son. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. You know, it's funny what I just share with them. Is that like, don't you think we ought to be concerned about being deceived? Only if you, you think there's something you, you could, that could be. See, you have areas in your life that say you will not be deceived. Can I give you one? I'm not proud of it. It's just a fact. Okay? Sometimes uh, my wife and I will go and stay in, in uh, 
<clears throat> casino hotels because you can get them real cheap because they think if you get you in there cheap and feed you good food, you'll spend thousands of dollars. We were leaving this one place in uh, Louisiana and this guy passed us in the, in the parking garage <laughs> and we were going to get our stuff out of the hotel. He turns back and says, hey, and we look back and says, stay away from the tables, he says. He said, why am I sharing this one? Because I may have some other issues, but I'll tell you one thing. I stay at a, at a casino hotel. Yeah. I'm not one bit tempted to go down there and spend any money. Yeah. It just, yeah. it, it's, you know what I'm saying? Now, some people, that's a big deal to them. They have a problem with that. But that's not one of my problems. And so guess what? There are things in you that are untouchable. I mean, it's, it's just not going to happen. You wouldn't do it. But you have other things that you're dealing with. But I'm here to say, be encouraged, you know. Uh, you, you know, if you, if, if you ever hear that we went broke because I gambled everything, you just know that wasn't true. That's a lie. <laughs> you know <what> I'm <coughs> Have you heard, spent too much money on a big yacht? Well, that, that might be. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't going to be gambling, see? <laughs> so we got to be excited about, hey, there's certain things that are just true. And I know this about this. There are things in your spouse, you all that are married, you just know there's certain things that he wouldn't do or she wouldn't do, and that helps you, <laughs> right? And so it's, it's good if somebody uh, is frugal and the other spends money. And that's really hard when both of you like spending money, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, I don't know why I'm saying that, but I believe that's a word for somebody. And you ought to be encouraged. There's certain things in you you're not going to do. Yeah. And, uh, and I know there are um, you know, there are certain men that I know that would never do anything to hurt my wife. If they were alone on a deserted island, I know they wouldn't do anything. It's kind of good to know people like that. It's good to know people that have integrity. No dead wood. And the millions of dollars that could have, billions that could have been saved yeah. out in California. It's, it's still a tinderbox because they got years and years and years of letting things lay fallow as the timber just, the underbrush just there. I won't tell them about the chemtrails, but that's interesting. <laughs> but no telling all the other stuff that's been sprayed in those forests that helped take and light it just like that. But I think God is saying, I have made you free by my spirit. And you have to just believe in your heart. Amen. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. God's made you a good person. Amen. And people say, you know, well, uh, are you saying that I'm good? I'm saying you're good. He said, well, not of myself. Okay. You're still good, though. <laughs> so God doesn't look at you and think, man, you're a bad person, but I'm going to love you anyway. No, you're my child. You're my son, my daughter. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to keep you. I'm going to make my... I'm going to make my peace permeate your soul. Pam, you just stay right where you're seated, okay? Oh, relax. Relax. Relax, relax. I am taking all the worry back. Oh, I'm taking all the fear, and I'm taking all the things that want to drown you and keep you from seeing. There's a brand new song I put within your heart. There's a brand new melody coming into your soul. And it's breaking through all the clouds so you can see the sun. Oh, my daughter, consider it done. Consider it done. Consider it done. See, are you saying a lot? 
Um, I sing to my grandbaby. <laughs> well, I saw you in this room, and you're singing, and the more you sing, it, it, the, 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 the melody is expanded in, in the room, and then it went outside the room, and just it just kept going. And the Lord says, the song I put in your heart, it just is expanding. It's very much like what I, I shared with your husband, an expansion. But his hands and everything are going out. But I see your, your singing just permeating. So I encourage you to keep singing. Sing to the Lord. Let it, let it be your stay. Let it be your, be a secure thing in your heart. Okay? Hallelujah. What's the Spirit of God saying? What's God saying to you, huh? Just don't be cast out in blue. David spoke to his soul. Why are you death downcast, oh my soul? And why are you disturbed within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. Back then, old David was preaching to his soul. Come on, soul. God had not forsaken you. I believe God wants to touch you physically today. Right now, I just declare that by the stripes of Jesus, you've been healed. And that you were whole and complete. And the Lord is touching you now by the Spirit of God. Every part of your body, every cell within you, responding to the Spirit of God. The Lord says, all of your organs are working perfectly. You are not fatigued. You are not at all weakened. But you're strengthened by the Spirit of God even now. You are full of the grace of Jesus. And right now I declare right now the name of Jesus that makes you whole. And we speak to you now in the name of the Lord. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Rejuvenated. Yes, I'm renewing your youth as the eagle. And you're going to rise up. You're going you're gonna to feel a youthfulness. Feel a freedom that, uh, that you've needed to feel. And it's going to be better than you ever thought it could be. I declare that in the name of Jesus. Does that make sense to you? No. Okay. And do you have anything that we need to pray for that we can mention here? Joy huh? Joy and pains. Right, right now, say, say in the name of Jesus, we rebuke the spirit of arthritis. Command you to leave this body in Jesus' name. You're off limits to it. In Jesus' name, you leave her. You let go of this woman of God. She shall freely move without any constriction. All her bones will praise the Lord, and she will not be in any way discouraged, but she will speak to the pain and say, pain be gone. She'll say, no more in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is not part of life. It's not part of life. It's part of death. So we rebuke it, command it to leave now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And Lord, I thank you for rejuvenating her now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Move, just move about for a minute. Just, just test it out here. Huh? Okay. Put your hand on the arm right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come here, uh, Jonathan. Let's just rebuke this thing right here. In Jesus' name. We've located We've located this issue here. In Jesus' name, I command you pain to be gone from this woman of God. In Jesus' name, you lose her. Let her go now. In Jesus' holy name. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Wow. There, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Gone in the name of the Lord. Amen. Is that any better? Move it up and down. Move it. Up. Just, just make it move. I've seen God do th things like this. Just like, oh, oh there it is. <laughs> is that Amen. Right? Amen. Keep doing it. Keep going. No, I'm, 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 I'm like a, a duck on a June bug here. I'm, no, just <laughs> keep going. No, keep, keep moving it. Keep moving it. In Jesus' name, I, I, this is not just a little bit better. This is a lot better. I declare in yes. Jesus' name. Yes. Jesus' name. Be totally renewed, totally healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
that God, I encourage you all day long. Yes. You leave here say, in the name of Jesus. And no matter what you feel, in the name of Jesus. Yes. We had a friend who got prayer in a meeting. He said he wanted to get healed. There was a lady praying for healing, and he went up. And <clears throat> and he got prayed for healing, and everybody's getting excited because they, they feel better and everything. But he had a, a rotator cuff that was broken and messed up. In fact, when he moved it, you could hear it. Mm-hmm. Terrible. Pain was excruciating. So he goes to sit down. He's kind of, oh, Lord, I thought I was going to get healed. God says, you are healed. So what he did, he went home. He didn't move it a lot because it was extremely painful. But every morning, he took a shower. He'd lift his arm like that, and pain would shoot through him. He said, in the name of Jesus, I'm healed. And it just, oh, man, just about made him fall to the floor. He said he did that for two weeks with pain, crazy. But on the 14th day, he raised his arm like this, came down, and he said it was totally gone, totally wow. gone. This guy lives in Belmede near Waco. Wow. It's a true story, <clears throat> really incredible. So I just encourage you to see, this is a fight of faith, and sometimes, you know, say, well, I got healed. Believe you did it, and I'm telling you, God healed you. Yeah. He healed you. Yeah, but, and so we don't see the evidence, we get discouraged. But I'm telling you what, don't be discouraged. Keep on. I have a knee that, in fact, I forgot which knee it is. It's, it's, it's this knee here. I fell on it when I was a little boy off a bicycle about 10, 12 years old, and I landed on the curb with my knee. I got up, and for years I could take that that uh, knee cap and move it around freely. But boy, when I got older, man, it started hurting, and then I had to exercise, and, and God had some people pray for me. And God supernaturally healed it. But then I started working out a few weeks later, and here comes the pain. I spoke that knee, you're healed. Man. Every time I felt that hatchet, you, you're healed in the name of Jesus. You're healed in the name of Jesus. And it went away. Then it happened again a few months later. So anytime that happens, in the name of Jesus, you speak to that. You speak to yours. In Jesus' name, you are healed. Speak to that mountain. Speak to that thing. Speak to those bones. In Jesus' name. And that vigilance. Very few people do that mm-hmm. because they don't think it'll work. I'm telling you, you just like tenacious. You know how to do that, don't you? <laughs> and so yeah. the Lord says, you just be tenacious and you watch and see all the things. Amen. It's Amen. awesome. And you're, you're, you're very, you, you have a beautiful spirit. And you're very, 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 very much in the favor of God. Amen. And you know that's true. Amen. Amen. God Amen. bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Well, Pat, let's just say, you s- just stay seated right there while I didn't ask you to sing. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Put this guitar down. Give me the mic. That'd be good. Okay, sweetie. Okay. Hey, you know what? God's going to touch your body today. And right, we're moving into a realm of healing right now. Okay. <laughs> And I see that your back is stressed out. And and your neck is stressed out. And the Lord's going to just right now touch you. And Shannon lays hands upon you. In the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, the pad is healed. We take authority over this pain. And we command you to leave in Jesus' name. And we declare every vertebrae to be lined up as it should be. All the sinews and all the muscles to be relaxed as they should be. And for everything that's tight that needs to be loose to be loosened, everything that is out of order, we now declare order. God is not a God of confusion, but of order, and we speak order to this body. In the name of Jesus, right now, we declare the goodness of God in this back. I praise you, Lord, that from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, she is free to be everything you've called her to be. I thank you, Lord, that she, too, is being renewed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Is that good? Man, I just feel it. Hallelujah. Do you know where that, that renewed as the eagle comes from? You ever heard that before? Well, where it comes from is that when an eagle, as it flies for a long time, over a period of time, these barnacles start collecting on its nose. It becomes kind of a crusty kind of coating to the point where it starts to get real heavy. And so this old bird goes over there and 
where he's perched on the mountain and he gets his, his beak and he starts beating his beak against the mountain. And hitting it over and over until that stuff starts to crack. And he starts to shake his head and this all this this these barnacles start coming off of him. And all of a sudden he feels light. He takes off flying. You know he did he renews his youth. He went back to when it was when he had no barnacles hanging off his nose. And the Lord spoke this to me from my life just a few weeks ago. He said, I'm renewing your youth as the eagle. Amen. And I've been knocking the barnacles off of my nose. <laughs> and the Lord told me the nose, the beak, is just like our nose. It has to do with smell. It has to do with discernment. Mm -hmm. And the Lord says, in order for you to renew your youth, you got to get your discernment back and you got to get, you know, refreshed where you can smell the way you need to smell and not have a heavy heart. So God, God's done that for you. Let me just tell you about the, the, the power of prayer because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm on, a, on a crusade now to lose weight and I'm not here to talk about me and my losing weight because I've struggled with this for many, many years. I don't know if anybody else has, but I guess over the last... Uh, 20 years, I've lost probably a thousand pounds. You know what I'm saying? I, I got pretty good at it. But the Lord started speaking to my heart a while back about my life and my future and all this kind of stuff. And He really spoke to my heart about, uh, you know, you mean to make some changes. Uh, and so uh, it wasn't because I became a Holy Joe and just dog determined and well, nothing like that. It's just something that God put in my heart that for the future of my family, my wife, my kids, that things needed to change. Now, I've known this for many, many years, right? But he who knows to do right and does it not to him, it's sin. So basically, that was, that was sin in my life. Now, I'm not saying I, I'm, I'm totally free from all that, but I'm really taking a stab at it. But I'm here to, to tell you about the prayer, the power of prayer. Was, this hadn't happened to me because I prayed. I'll tell you the reason this happened is because my wife prayed. She stopped talking to me about it and went right to Jesus. And he came right to me. I've had a an awakening. So it isn't because, you know, I don't know how much weight I'm gonna lose, but I don't want to lose as much as I need to or I feel good about myself. I don't have some crazy idea of being a bean pole or something. But, but I mean, I wanted to say that because I just thank God for my wife because she tried her best to talk to me and convince me and remind me. And finally, she just went to the Lord. Um, I saw a vision years ago, and it was a strange vision, but I'm going to share this with you. This is really for women, for wives. How many you know you can say a lot and nothing happens, right? <laughs> and so I saw this vision of a man and a woman, and it, obviously they were having an argument, a fight. They were just at odds, right? And don't, don't freak out when I tell you what happened, but I saw the woman get down on her knees and bow before her husband. I thought, what in the world, you know? It's just weird. I mean, how can I even tell somebody about this? I'm going to think I'm a, you know, a misogynist or something. But I saw that, and then I saw the picture back up, and standing right behind her was Jesus. Wow. And what she did... She humbled herself and she got down to where he didn't see her anymore. And I was so, God. And that's what happened to me. I've, this is kind of personal, but, you know, of course it's going all over the internet. But, but I'm here to tell you this. Um, maybe you haven't prayed or maybe you prayed and it didn't work. But, man, when you have somebody in your life that loves you, maybe their prayer will get answered. <laughs> And that's what happened to me, and I'm so thankful for it. And I just, thank you. She, she did that, and it, it really just amazed me how God just uh, has gotten a hold of my heart. And now I just feel so much better about life. And I'm thinking, my God, you know, why didn't I think of this before? But <laughs> it, it doesn't, it, at this juncture, it doesn't matter. You know, you can live in regret and second guess yourself and all that. It just doesn't matter. What matters is things are good now. And I just thank you all for just pray for me. <laughs> uh, 
I won't backslide. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then I'll just keep marching forward and, and to, the, to the purpose of God. And uh, so I don't know if this makes sense, but if, uh, if you remember that vision, it really shows me the woman has more power than the man does when she does that. She really does. She probably, her husband's probably perfect, so that you probably don't need to do that. But, <laughs> but uh, I'm telling you, I have a testimony. It works. Amen. And, uh, yes, it does. Huh? Yes, it does. So, anyway, I don't know what else she's going to pray. But, uh, <laughs> I guess i got to watch out, right? All right. But, uh, but when, the, when it's all filled with the goodness of God, there's no condemnation, there's no fear, there's no repercussions. It's just like, I just thank God for my wife. I just thank God for uh, for her faithfulness to, to do whatever she did to make this happen. I was like, okay. So I, I, I kind of like to think, you know, I've got pretty good control over my life and fairly disciplined and everything. And I was like, you know what? Without the grace of God, I'm a big mess, you know? <laughs> so I had to depend on the grace of God. And this really touched me, and I'm going to end with this. Um, I heard somebody say, and when they said it, it just really got me. He said, the Christian life is not hard. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. And when I heard that, I thought, wow, that's heavy. Mm -hmm. He said, well, if it's impossible, how can you do it? By the Spirit. Well, it's the yeah. reason he said it that way is so we wouldn't be struggling yeah. about how hard it is. Because when the Holy Spirit comes, you realize it's impossible without the Spirit. But now I have the Spirit, all things are possible. And like my pastor says, it's a piece of cake. It just ends up being more wonderful than we first imagined. So thank you all for being patient. We've had a, quite a meeting here, but yeah. I just sense the Lord really wants to bless this house. And so, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for Jonathan and Olivia, Lord. And we just let's stretch our hands. For you. Thank you, Lord, for what's happening in this place. Yes. This is a holy place. Yes. This is a place that's not defined by numbers, but by quality. <laughs> it's defined by people who are doing the will of God in their generation. And I say in the name of Jesus that the pitter-patter of rain is only a sign of the deluge that is coming through the valley. And when the deluge comes, the water comes in abundance. And everywhere the river goes, everything lives. I see it turning into a, a great river teeming with fish and trees on the left side and the right side of the river bearing fruit for the healing of the nations. I see right here in this house is a refuge from the storm, a place of hiding, from that which is destructive. In Jesus' name I say this is the day to rise up this is the awakening. This is the great awakening that I've told my people would take place. And it's happening here and now. In the years to come, you will see my glory, the Lord says. And no man, no hand of man, no hand of devils will be able to stop what I'm doing because I'm doing it by my spirit.